Hey everybody, this is my 20 gallon planted tank. I've got a couple of angelfish and some neon sword tails and a few other various things in here. This is a tank I have set up in my wife's room and I don't come in here very often. In fact, I don't come in here ever except to do maintenance on this fish tank. So this is very much an out of sight, out of mind type of fish tank and it is probably my most neglected. Uh, I try to get to it when I do my other upstairs tanks. I try to do them all at the same time, but again, I often don't. And so I honestly don't know how long it's been since I've done a water change on this tank, but it's probably been a significant amount of time. I'm going to say at least six to eight weeks, honestly, possibly even maybe a little more than that. I do lose track of time. It gets ahead of me. So today we're just going to have at it. I'm going to do a full water change. We're going to wipe the glass down a little bit. I might get in there and pick a few snails out uh, with my forceps. Uh, but we're definitely going to vac the gravel, change the filter, and I'm probably going to wind up trimming the uh, plant out here too. So let's get started by vacing the gravel a little bit. This gives you an idea of how neglected the tank is. You can see how much mulm, you know, fish poop, decayed material. Lots of it coming up out of this corner. And this is another one of those tanks that I established a while ago. And it's just got so much stuff going on in it. And it's pleasing to look at, and I'm sure the fish really enjoy all of the nooks and crannies and places to hide. But it doesn't make for easy maintenance. And it allows the detritus and everything, millions of places to build up and collect. So I don't know how well you can see it through here, uh, just because of the darkness of all of this overhead water sprite. Let's see what we can do about a little bit of this. So we've got lots and lots of new growth coming off of this. I'll sort this out later. Just not sure how much I'm dealing with at the moment. actually going to break off some of the existing fronds that were already on this piece and I'm just going to leave that one in here Java fern leaf down here that's dying off needs to come out. And this is a whole new baby Java fern completely intact. Now, don't forget if you're not one of my regular viewers, I do sell my plants. I've got lots of Java fern. Uh, right now, I could probably do some Anubias. I've always got water sprite. Uh, I've got some Java Fern Windelov right now. That's the sort of fingery, lace leafy looking Java Fern. So I'll put my email down below. You can go ahead and contact me if you're interested in any aquatic plants. And we can make arrangements from there. So this five gallon bucket is pretty much full. If you'll notice how I removed that scoop. If you've got one of these kind of drains, when you're done, roll it up and out. That's this curvature of this uh, hose actually makes it easy to do that. And that way all the stuff you've got collected in there goes out the bottom. It doesn't fall back into the tank as you break the surface. So just roll it over and scoop it out and you'll be good to go. So let me get this out of my hand and I'll be right back.
All right, so wiping down the glass, I don't do anything fancy. I just use a little bit of the batting material. You can see all these little black spots are snails. They're all over the place. Uh, we don't have a ton of lighting in this tank, and therefore I don't have a ton of stuff growing on the glass. So the wiping uh, down part is not that big a deal in here. It's just kind of part of the maintenance. I'm in here doing this, so I may as well go ahead and get that glass cleaned up nicely. I'm not really worried about the sides. You don't really look in the sides, and then of course on the back, again, just sort of makes it look like natural growth in there, and I'm not too concerned about that. So that is it for the wiping of the glass. Now for the filter, this is a Tetra Whisper filter, hang on the back, and it's set up for a 20 gallon tank. And so I always just bring up one of these and it's just the right size for me to put it in while I'm working with it. So that's the filter. You can see how kind of gross and grungy it is. It's not the worst filter I've ever seen, but it's pretty dirty. It definitely needs to be changed. So this is the frame. If you're not familiar with these Tetra Whisper filters, uh, let's see one of these pads over here is the one I want. So that's all it is, is the frame. I just take a little slice of that batting. I cut off an appropriate size piece, put it against it. I just make sure it folds around enough that it's covered it. Fold your little flaps down, put your clip on, and there's your filter. That's it. That's all I use for a filter in this tank. Now, of course, I do have the bio sponge in here for biofiltration, but as far as mechanical filtration, that's all I do. I've got no... Um, activated carbon or anything like that it's just that little piece of batting and that is it so the next step is going to be to top it back off with water Now, fortunately, I have a bathroom right across the hall, and for a tank this size, I simply just fill up gallon jugs. That's our two little kitty cats arm in arm if you're wondering what that is. So if you're not familiar with my routine, I do have well water rather than municipal water. So I don't have anything like chlorine or chloramines or anything like that in my water. Uh, I do treat it myself so I know uh, the hardness and I know the pH and so on and so forth. So I can do these big water changes and simply swap out water without treating it. I don't have to add prime or any dechlorinators or anything like that. See that bright pink fish? That is a tetra glowfish. 
and it is one of the earliest fish I bought way back in my early days of fish keeping when I still had the brightly colored gravel and Spongebob houses and all that kind of stuff I thought those uh, glowfish were just the bee's knees I thought they were neat and I bought a bunch of them most of them didn't survive I have some blue ones that are still alive downstairs in my 29 miscellaneous and I've got that purple one right there that's my very first glowfish I ever bought and it's still alive oddly enough So I don't typically name my fish, but my little uh, quarry cat down here, that's Swimmy. She's got a name. She, at this point, is my oldest fish. Uh, even this uh, glowfish here is not from the very beginning. Very few fish from the very beginning survived for terribly long. So by the time I got Swimmy here, you know, my quarry cat, I had already been keeping fish for maybe a year, year and a half by the time I got her and it's glowfish here came shortly thereafter so it's not from all the way back in the beginning but I have had this glowfish so that's a genetically modified neon tetra that's now probably at least five years old As I was saying, I don't really typically name my fish, but Swimmy got a name. Of course, Butterbean downstairs in my brackish tank has a name. And I did name this galactic purple glowfish Zaphod, uh, just because, you know, the name is galactic purple. So Zaphod seemed like an appropriate name for me. When I got that fish, I actually did not even know that skirt tetras were schooling fish or shoaling fish. In fact, I didn't even know what a skirt tetra was. I had no idea that that was a skirt tetra. I just saw it was a cool purple fish, so I bought it and named it Zaphod. And for those of you who know where I get the name Zaphod, when I think of Zaphod, I think of Mark Wing Davies' Zaphod, uh, not the, um, I can't even think of the guy's name who played Zaphod in the 2005 version, but I'm old school. I think of the old Mark Wing Davies' version of Zaphod. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can Google it. Otherwise, I am going to call that done. I might put another little splash of water in there just because that kind of annoys me when you can see that line between the top and the water. But as I've said, I don't really come in here and see this anyway. As long as the fish are taken care of, the tank's been clean, filters changed, and they've got fresh water, that's all I'm worried about. We've got the plants removed enough that we can see in there now. There's some light shining in there. So that looks pretty good. These uh, neon sword tails here uh, were a gift from one of my viewers, so they're doing really well. Very happy with them. And it might be time to add a little more splash of color in here, maybe add a few more neons. It seems like I've only got the one neon. I've been looking around for any more, and I only see the one. So it looks like we're down to just a single neon, so maybe I'll add a few more of them the next time they go on sale for a dollar a piece. So there you go, everybody. 
Uh, like I said, the, the reason this tank doesn't get a ton of maintenance is out of sight, out of mind. It's certainly not because it's complicated or difficult or, you know, anything like that. That was my full routine. That was the complete water change. You got to see it start to finish. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Don't forget I call this one my wife's tank. It's got its own playlist. Thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.